Welcome back to the history of still photography. This week, we're moving into the 1850s and 60s, building on the knowledge that you acquired in our past couple of weeks in our course. We'll be looking at some new advances and also thinking about how photography is impacting the medium of painting. So let's get started. Specifically, the new technological advances that we'll be looking at this week are called wet plate processes. And you'll start to understand why when we get into the module a little bit. Um, when it comes to our real world connections that we'll be making this week, what you're going to be thinking about is how photography is impacting painting, but also still kind of um, building upon that innate human desire that we have to represent the appearance of humans. So up until photography, that had always been a function of the medium of painting. Now, painting had been around for, you know, lots and lots of years. I'm talking like hundreds of years, like oh, actually thousands of years. Um, and so how is photography impacting that? And this quote here from Paul de la Roche, a painter, a French painter, he said this the year photography was announced in 1839, he explained, exclaimed, from this day, painting is dead. So we want to kind of go into that space and try to imagine ourselves back in that day and age and think about what that would have been like. Now, painting was super expensive. And I we talk a lot about photography as being this kind of medium that democratized portraiture because more people could actually afford portraits. But it's really important to recognize that everybody could not afford portraits with photography. Certainly more people could. But when we look at who's represented in the, the daguerreotypes that you um, actually put together in our last module, I want you to be thinking about that. Who is in those images and who is not in those images? And what does that have to say about society and who has access to money, um, expendable funds to spend on things like portraits? So it's really a privilege still to have a portrait be taken. So this is something you'll dig into in your discussion this week, the democratization of portraiture. Now, let's take a look at those historical processes and, that uh, we learned last week, right? So this was the timeline as it looked last week when we learned about um, the, the, really the birth of photography and really focused in on the daguerreotype and the calotype. Now this week we're gonna build on to that just like we have been doing and move into the 1850s and 60s with the invention of collodion. So you'll learn about what collodion is in this module and why it really was so valuable for the medium of photography. Um, again, remember, it's really important for you to download your study guide and use it in this module, answer the questions on it, keep it in mind as you go through the different pages and watch the various videos. I always include videos. I try not to include videos that are too long. So uh, watch them. Some of them will have some overlap in them, that, but generally that's a good thing because then you can hear things described in different ways. So Collodion um, allowed for the invention of a few different processes. One is the glass plate negative, um, which was used to make what's referred to as albumin prints. So you'll learn about that. And then also the amber type and the tin type. So I want you to be familiar with, with all of these different terms um, loosely, what those processes consisted of. Think about like if you could hold one, what would it have looked like? And really important here is which processes allowed for copies to be made or which ones were reproducible versus unique or one-of-a-kind images because that's going to be a real driver as we get into um, you know which which uh, process sticks which process really holds uh, and you're going to really start to understand that this desire to make copies is really a big deal um, a photographic image that is unique is more like a painting right there's only one and you can hang it on a wall and you can look at it and that's great but you can't make multiples of it and share them with others. Uh, so start thinking about that this week when you get familiarized with these different processes and um, I look forward to seeing you in the module.